All right. And you mostly just zoom in on the hands. Okay. Right. So I'm going to do a, is it a discussion. Yes. yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to do a discussion of traditional grip for the field. It differs. Uh, from drum set where you have the latitude to slant your drum. Right, this is flat you know, drum. The right. traditional grip in itself was originally for the derived for a slanted rope drum. drum. Uh, rope we're talking about a traditional grip for a, mainly for a flat drum, even gotcha. though you see some cores will tilt their carriers. But we're not. So the, the progression of the stroke is this. It starts with the idea that the wrist is pretty much vertical okay. while you're playing instead of laid out flat, which is, you see a lot on drum set. And so the stick is forced down by a unified uh, mechanism of the thumb and first finger. So if you're going to get a blister, it's going to be right here on the underside of your last knuckle. Okay. And then it's held up or kicked up when necessary by the last joint of the third finger here. Okay. The second finger doesn't accomplish much except dictating where the stick can slide within your cradle. It sort of keeps it in line. Gotcha. The fourth finger does absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. So the stroke is basically your, you know, once you learn how to play a double, you find you have the reflex to do that with almost any kind of cradle on your body, right? I mean, right. it's not so much the muscles that learn it, it's your nervous system that learns it. And so all you really have to do if you know how to play doubles match is train these new muscles to do that same double action. Okay, so you're pushing down with this. Now, if you were to stop your hand in the middle of a sequence of singles, the stick should fall loose. I'm not saying it should, but it could, because what we're talking about is a stroke that permits the stick to interact in a very elastic way with the trampoline of the, of the drum head. Okay, we don't want to be doing anything that stifles that. Right, let the drum so, do some of the work. Got it. Um, when I marched with the cavies, there was a, a sort of a competing school of thought, which was ultra high control, but like Madison Scouts and, and Phantom Regiment had a sort of a squinched up kind of a grip, and we were the opposite of that. We were the answer to that. We, we, we would drop more sticks. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, well, but this, so but this way it's, it's freeing it up so that you yeah. can do The single strokes look like this, and the fulcrum point is here between the thumb and first finger at about a third of the weight on the stick. Okay. So you have that stroke to, to learn, and then a clamped down stroke if you're going to play a flam next. You can't have the stick full, doing a full rebound, so you right. clamp it down, which is just sort of squeezing what you've got. And then you've got a full lift stroke, which is just kicking it up with this. And, and So you're using your ring finger. So, so the upstroke really comes from the wrist and the ring finger yeah. pushing up on it. Yeah, okay. the, wrist, the, the ring finger is the cradle. The wrist is the, the source see, of the you, motion. Right, right. And then to do a back stick... As I'm used to doing it, I'm sure there are different schools of thought on this. It's basically raising the wrist, flipping the stick under, and executing a, a matched style grip stroke with that. A uh, pretty seriously choked up matched grip stroke. Well, it has to be, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, okay. You'll see in one of the videos that I'm going to bring <clears throat> that at one point the Cavaliers did this thing they call the Casey Claw, which is a, a roll where two strokes are played back front. And what they did was they cheated right before that maneuver. They did a buzz roll near the edge and they uh, pushed their grip up to make it work better. That's, you, you see orchestral we, players do that. But we won't be doing that yeah. if we back stick with our right hands. We'll, we'll just be flipping. And the back stick for the right hand then becomes lifting the, the wrist and basically executing a traditional style stroke without doing the full and you know, putting the cradle in place. Gotcha. And then the other thing that I hope to, to work in, because it looks so cool on this video I shot, it's like the coolest thing I've ever seen done mm -hmm. by only two players that actually looks like a snare line, is um, the maneuver that you'll see on the video is, uh, what are they playing? They're going... On a non-stressed note, they reach the left hand over with this traditional grip and just press it into the head. Ah. It's actually pretty dramatic because the I could see I, I could see how that's pretty dramatic because it changes the whole stick angle. The arm lifts up. 
I'm not, I'm not very good at it. Well, but anyway, <laughs> it's not something you do, do very often. If we do force ourselves to play traditional for half a song, it will be because we want to show off something that just works better traditional. Um, anyway, so I think I covered most of it. Uh, questions while we get the camera rolling. The, Thanks for coming. The mash script back stick, you want to be more of a, a side instead of a, you don't want a top, you want it. Well, the sticks. The stick swings straight over into position and then gets whipped down. So what you're saying is it's not. It's not this. It's not what I thought would be something like something along the lines of that. I don't like that. No. I like I like more of a sideways. Look. So it's a rotation of the wrist. Steady, I'm doing a spaz here. Ah. I don't know what drill I'm playing, but. Uh, <laughs> One you just we'll, made we'll up. Put this on YouTube where everybody can see it, and uh, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. All right.